Okay, on Friday, uh, we were talking about the difference between scalar and vector quantities. Okay, we were just reviewing that. We didn't get very far into it. And I just finished telling you a story about how um, it's really bad to tell somebody how far away something is by telling them how long it will take to get there. Okay, we were talking about how that's not really answering their question and how that can lead to um, misunderstandings and things like that. Okay, uh, because obviously how long it takes to get somewhere is dependent on not only how far away that place is, but how fast you are going as well. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're always, um, you know, giving the proper answer to a question. Okay, um, we had also, we ended off by talking about how um, scalars and vectors can be equally accurate. In fact, a scalar quantity can be more accurate than a vector quantity. But we have this tendency to think that vector quantities are more accurate because they give us more information. They have a magnitude and a direction. But remember that accuracy is based on the way something is measured not on how much other information is given, okay? So if I say that Calgary is 40 kilometers away, as we set up here, okay, at 13 degrees west of north, okay, um, how accurate is that? Like how accurately did I measure the 40 kilometers? Because I wrote it as 40, not 40.1. So this is accurate to plus or minus one kilometer. Okay, that's how accurately I measured it to the nearest kilometer. I didn't measure any more accurately than that. Okay, that's a vector quantity because it gave me magnitude and direction. But if I said the Calgary is 40.00 kilometers away, is that more accurate? It's more accurate, but it's a scalar quantity. Okay. It certainly it doesn't have direction on it, but it's actually measured far more accurately than was the other one. Okay, this is uh, you know like measured to the nearest um, well like uh, dec dec uh, decameter, okay, or something like that. So we would have uh, that this would be more accurate, be, you know, accurate to plus or minus 10 meters, where the other one was accurate to plus or minus one kilometer. All right. So accuracy is based on how you measure something, not on whether it's scalar or vector. Everybody, all right with that idea? Okay, so example here of looking at a trip from two different points of view, one from a scalar point of view and one from a vector point of view. All right, so let's say that I want to go to Walmart, okay, for some reason. All right, so here's where my house is. And if I want to go to Walmart, I've got to follow the streets, you know, I got to follow the roads. I'm not going to, you know, fly or anything like that. I've got to walk or whatever. Okay, so let's say I walk to Walmart along the black path. Okay, and let's say that along that black path, I travel exactly four kilometers. And it takes me a half an hour to get to Walmart. Okay, my distance traveled would be four kilometers. Okay, my displacement, however, is not going to be four kilometers. Why not? Right, okay. Displacement only is a vector quantity that measures how far I have changed my position by, not how I got there. Okay, because distance is a scalar quantity, it doesn't matter that I change direction a whole bunch of times along the path to Walmart. Okay, um, for displacement, displacement is only concerned with the purple line. Okay, this is how much I have changed my position by from start to finish. All right, is this going to be shorter? Yeah, the shortest distance between two places is always a straight line. So this is going to be a smaller magnitude, okay? But it's also got to have a direction because displacement is a vector quantity. All right, everybody okay with that? Okay, so that's, this is the, the purple line is the vector point of view, okay? The black line is the scalar point of view of the same trip, okay? Now I'm getting different numbers, but it's the same trip, all right? So distance-wise, I've gone four kilometers but I have only displaced myself 2.8 kilometers from where I've started. And I would have to put some kind of vector on there, like, I don't know, uh, like 35 degrees north of west or something like that, okay? Everybody all right with that idea? Okay, it takes me a half an hour to get to Walmart. What's my speed?
eight kilometers per hour. Okay, and the way we figure that out is we say that speed is equal to distance divided by time. That's four kilometers divided by a half an hour. Okay, four over 0.5 is eight kilometers per hour. Okay. What's my velocity? Uh, the direction will be 35 degrees north of west, but the velocity won't be 8. The, the magnitude won't be 8 kilometers per hour. Because from a vector point of view, I didn't go 4 kilometers. I went 2.8 kilometers. Okay? So if I'm calculating what my velocity is, okay? so B with the arrow over top, that's displacement divided by time, which is going to be 2.8 kilometers at 35 degrees north of west divided by a half an hour, okay, which is going to be 0.56, I think. Sorry, not 0.5, 5.6, not 0.56. Okay, 5.6 kilometers per hour at 35 degrees north of west. How do I know that my velocity has the same vector as my displacement? Okay, let me ask it a different way. Is it possible for me to end up displaced northwest if my velocity is south? No. Okay, I can't displace myself northwest if I'm traveling south. Okay, velocity and displacement are always going to have the same vector. They have to because one comes from, from the other. Mathematically speaking, here's why it's the same. Is there anything in this equation that would cancel off or change that part of it? No. Okay. There's no direction on the bottom. Okay. The units change to kilometers per hour, but there's nothing to change, cancel, or otherwise alter the vector. So the vector stays. All right. Everybody okay with that idea? All right. Now, I've walked to Walmart. Took me half an hour. I walked eight kilometers, displaced myself 2.8 kilometers at 35 degrees north of west. I get to the door, and because I'm old, getting senile, I realize I don't have my wallet. Now, I'm not the kind of guy that just goes into Walmart to walk around because, well, I don't really like Walmart. But um, so I just turn around and I walk home. I've accomplished absolutely nothing. So I turn around, I follow exactly the same path home, and a half an hour later, I'm back home. How far have I gone in total? I've gone eight kilometers, okay? And it took me exactly one hour, so my speed is still eight kilometers per hour. All right, what's my displacement now? Zero. Zero, right. I'm back where I started because displacement, okay? The formula for displacement is final position minus initial position. And those are the same place, home, okay? So I haven't changed my position at all if I ended up back home again. So then, what's my velocity over the whole trip? Zero. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if I haven't displaced myself at all over the whole trip, then when I plug in this formula, I've got zero over one hour. Well, zero divided by anything is zero. I haven't gone anywhere. Okay. Technically, I haven't done anything. I, I ended up back where I started. Everybody all right with that? Even though I've walked eight kilometers, I haven't changed my position because I ended up back where I started. Okay. So in your car, you have this little meter that tells you how, um, tells you how many kilometers are on your car. What do we call that? Odometer. The odometer. Okay. Does that measure distance or displacement? It measures distance. It would be completely useless if it measured displacement. Why? If you like went toward and back every day, it'd be zero for you. Okay. If I kept going back, like if I went somewhere and then kept coming back home, every time I came home, what would the odometer read? No, it would read how far it is from the dealership I bought the car at to my house. Uh -huh. See, everyone wants to say zero, but they didn't drop your car off by helicopter at your house. You had to drive it from the dealership to your house. But it would be great if you put it on Kijiji to sell it, because then you could say, hey, this car has like 3.2 kilometers on it, because that's what it would read every time you came home. 
which is exactly why it doesn't read that, okay? That would be useless. It has to say how far the car was driven because you drive your car different directions all the time, okay? There's another case where a scalar quantity is more valuable than a vector quantity, all right? Everybody okay with that idea? All right. Okay, so is this V equals D over T thing making sense? I sure hope so. Okay. All right, case like this. So I have a hiking map here. And I want to go from uh, seldom in campground to, um, to Snake Indian Falls campground. There's a little sign outside of seldom in campground that says Snake Indian Falls campground, 26 kilometers. Scalar or vector quantity? Scalar. What does it assume I'm going to do? Follow the path. Okay, again, another case where a scalar quantity is more appropriate. Okay, if that sign instead said Snake Indian Falls Campground, 19 kilometers at 50 degrees west of north, I could probably still end up there, but there's a lot of disaster to befall me along this line. Agreed? And like there's, you know, rivers and this is a glacier and, and like, you know, just things that would not be good to travel on okay, or across or whatever. OK, this obviously makes way more sense to follow the path. OK, and so we got to remember that scalar quantities are not bad because we get this impression that because they don't have direction, they're somehow not as valuable. OK, they have just as much value okay, as a vector quantity, in some cases, even more. Okay, so this is based, this uh, section of the notes here is just what we talked about to do with the Walmart map. Okay, um, speed and velocity have a similar relationship to displacement and distance. One is scalar, one is vector, but they measure the same thing. Okay, one measures, uh, sorry, distance and displacement measure how far you've gone. One measures just how far you've gone. The other measures how far you've gone from your starting position in what direction. Okay, speed and velocity both measure how fast you're changing your position. Okay, or changing your distance. All right, and as such, they are measured in like meters per second or kilometers per hour or whatever. Okay, you're gonna have a distance over a time unit for those. Okay. All right. Okay, just terminology here, just so that we keep everything straight. Okay, scalar quantity is any measured quantity that has only a value, 40 kilometers, 70 kilograms. Okay, things like that are scalar quantities. Okay, distance is a scalar quantity that measures how far an object has traveled. Okay, that is very often how it will be said in like a problem question, you know, like on a quiz or a worksheet or something like that. If the question says how far, it wants distance. If it says how far and in what direction it wants, displacement, okay? So just make sure you're always looking for uh, those kind of key terms in a question, okay? Speed is a scalar quantity that measures how far an object has traveled in a set time interval, meters per second, kilometers per hour, okay? Whatever it happens to be, All right? Vector quantities are any measured quantity that has both value or magnitude and direction, 40 kilometers forward or 3.2 kilometers, 18 degrees west of south, 9.81 meters per second squared down. Okay, all of those are vector quantities. Okay. All right, displacement is a vector quantity that measures how far and in what direction. Okay, so again, those are kind of the keys there, how far and in what direction an object has traveled from its starting position. The starting position is always the reference point unless you're told otherwise. Okay. And then velocity measures the displacement of an object during a set time interval. So change in position divided by change in time. Okay. And then we have our two formulas here. Okay. Speed is distance over time. Velocity is displacement over time. Okay. You're pretty familiar with those already from Science 10. Okay, questions on any of those? Anybody still need that one? I see people writing furiously. Which is good, by the way. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's a good thing that you're writing furiously. Okay, so we're gonna go over a couple of examples here. Don't worry about that, that's okay. Uh, we're gonna go over a few examples here, just to kind of walk through and review how all this works, okay? Uh, try a few from the worksheet, just to make sure we're familiar with everything, and then uh, we'll move on from there and see how we're doing, okay? All right, so this first example here, okay? Um, 
I have a traveler who's initially traveling one and a or sorry, initially standing one and a half meters to the right of this Inukshuk. Okay, so this is her initial position. Okay, then she moves so that she is three and a half meters to the left of the Inukshuk. So she's over here. This is her final position. Okay, um, we want to determine her displacement. Right, so we said that displacement is final position minus initial position. However, one of the positions is right and the other is left. So what do I have to do with one of them? One of them has to be negative, okay? This is the whole vector thing, all right? So in this case, then I'm gonna take the final position, I'm gonna make it negative 3.5, okay? Because it's left, right? And then I'm gonna subtract the initial position, 1.5, that'll be positive. Okay, negative 3.5 minus 1.5 is going to give me negative 5 meters. Now, should I leave it as negative when I write my answer? No, it should be 5 meters left. Okay, we always want to translate that back into whatever directions we were given in the question. All right, so her displacement is 5 meters left. How far did she go? Five meters, okay? Remember, how far is just distance, okay? It doesn't matter what direction she went, she went five meters, okay? Lots of times, displacement and distance can have the same magnitude. If you don't change direction at any point during the trip, they will have the same magnitude, okay? Here's a case in point. Okay, I want you guys to try um, all three of those, actually. Okay, I'll make them a little bit bigger so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, answers are down below, so you'll know if you did them right. I'll give you guys a few minutes to get ahead of me, and then I'll walk through them. Okay, um, so we've got sprinting drills where um, the people who are running go 40 meters north, then they walk 20 meters north, and then they sprint 100 meters north. So everything is all north, okay? So it's pretty easy because they don't have to treat anything as positive or negative. Everything's in the same direction, okay? Sprinter's displacement from their initial position is 100 plus 20 plus 40, which is 160 meters north, okay? I have to have the north on there because it asked for displacement. Had it said, how far do they run? Then I could have just said 160 meters, right? Okay, how many people are done number two? Okay, let's have a look at that one then too. All right, uh, so to perform a give and go, a basketball player fakes out the defense by moving 0.75 meters to the right and then three and a half meters to the left. Okay, what is the player's displacement from their starting position? So sometimes it's good to just kind of draw a diagram of this. Okay, here's the starting position. First, they move 0.75 meters to the right. And then from there, they go three and a half meters to the left. Okay, so how far are they from their starting position? 2.75 meters, okay? Because their starting position is here, okay? They moved this way, so I have to essentially subtract the 0.75 from the three and a half left that they went after that in order to figure out how far from their starting position they are, okay? Everybody all right with that? So lots of times in physics, you're gonna find that drawing a diagram is going to be very helpful. Okay, especially if you're a visual person like me. Okay, how many people have done number three? Okay, so if we're building a wall, we have a bricklayer that's sweeping the cement or the mortar back and forth. She swings her hand back and forth 1.70 meters four times. So she goes over once, twice, three times, four times. She ends up same place. Okay, so her total displacement is zero. Okay, but her total distance is 1.7 times four. Okay, so ends up being 6.80 meters. Okay, and anytime our displacement is zero meters, even though displacement's a vector quantity, we can't give direction because there isn't one. We haven't gone anywhere. Okay. All right. Okay, so we've got two categories here uh, that we talked about, that's scalar and vector. Okay, so fairly straightforward on those. Okay, comparing and contrasting distance and displacement, they both measure how far. Okay, just one measures how far and in what direction. 
Okay, that's really all that's different there. Okay, the significance of a reference point. Okay, well, it, I have to know where I'm measuring stuff from. Okay, like that question about the give and go. I needed to know that I went 0.75 meters to the right of that before I turned and went left. Okay, so a reference point is always important. Okay, I want you guys to try question four and question five for right now. Okay, give those two a try right now and see how you do. I'm going to run down to the photocopy room and grab your formula sheets for you. Okay, so on number four, all right, we've got, um, we're trying to illustrate the importance of a reference point in question number four, right? Who is our reference point in number four? Like if we don't, if we don't write her down somewhere, we can't even start the question. Dolores. Dolores is our reference point. We can't place Chad unless we place Dolores somewhere. Right, because her the reference for Chad being two meters left of Dolores. So um, we're just going to kind of place Dolores somewhere. Okay, that's her, and we're going to go two meters left of Dolores will be Chad. Okay, and then Ed is four and a half meters right of Chad. So how many meters right of Dolores is he? Two point five. Okay, and then Greg is seven and a half meters uh, left of Chad. Okay. First time I did this, when we first moved into this school, we didn't have the smart board. Greg ended up over here. It won't come off. And they haven't repainted the door frame since 2006. So Greg is still there. Okay. Um, then Hannah is one meter right of Ed. So Hannah is right here. All right. So if what's the displacement of a teacher who walks from Greg to Hannah? All right. So um, we're going to go seven and a half, nine and a half, 12, 13 meters. What else do I need on that? Right. Okay. So just illustrating the importance of a reference point. Dolores is our reference point in that question. How many people are done number five? Okay. So on number five, we have a person's displacement is 50 kilometers west. Okay. What is his final position if he started at five kilometers east? All right. So the givens are he started at five kilometers east. His displacement is 50 kilometers west, and we're looking for his final position. Everybody okay with that? All right, and we already said a couple of times today, displacement is final position minus initial position. So if I want to look for my final position, I just take initial position and add it over to this side. So I would take my displacement, add my initial position, and that will give me my final position. Now, my displacement's west, my initial position is east, so one of them needs to be negative. Okay, we usually make west negative, so I'm going to go negative 50 plus 5. All right, that's going to mean um, their final position is negative 45 meters or kilometers. Kilometers. Okay, uh, but I can't leave it as negative because that's not what the question gave me. It's going to be 45 kilometers west. Okay, everybody all right with that? So just manipulating the formula a little bit. Okay, um, so we got number six here. Uh, these people playing with these seal skin rackets, which I'm sure PETA would not like very much, but they're made out of seal skin. So I don't know, they're an authentic Inuit thing, I guess. Okay, uh, they're standing three meters apart. Okay, the child on the right tosses the ball to the child on the left and then moves five meters to the right to catch the ball again. Determine the horizontal distance and displacement. The ball travels from its initial position only horizontally. Okay, so starts with this person here. Okay, they throw it to this person and then it goes over there. How far does the ball go? Just distance. What's the distance traveled by the ball? 11 meters. Okay, and eight meters is our gut check reaction because it's like right away, five plus three is eight. Except we forget that the ball goes here and then all the way over to there. First it traveled three meters to the left and then it went eight meters to the right because she ran five meters 
away from where she started. So it actually travels 11 meters. But the total displacement of the ball is only <laughs> 5 meters right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Everybody okay with how those work? Okay. Again, just simple stuff math-wise, just illustrating the importance of reference points. Okay. Um, importance of using or manipulating equations here. Okay. Remember that if I want to move something, I do the opposite. Okay. And if I do something to one side, do it to the other. Okay. And I move what's not attached first, which doesn't apply to this formula because nothing's attached. Okay. If I want to solve for D, what do I do with T? Multiply both sides by, whoop, supposed to, the whole thing's supposed to go. Okay, multiply both sides by it. Okay, like so, T times V will equal D. All right, if I want to solve for T, move V under there. Okay, just manipulating equations, simple stuff. Okay, because we're going to have a few questions to do with that here coming up. Like ones you would have done in Science 10, except that they're going to have multiple parts. Okay, so I'm going to have you try this one with the garbage truck first here. Okay. What I want to remind you of is that average velocity is total displacement over total time. So this trip consists of two parts, but it wants the average velocity over the entire trip. Okay? For that, we need total displacement and total time. Okay? Give you a few minutes on that one. Okay, if uh, if I'm setting this up to solve it, okay, I'm going to write down my givens first, and I'm going to break that up into the different parts of the question, including the total, because I want to have the average velocity, which means I need the total displacement and the total time, right? So in part one, they tell me that the truck travels at 4.0 meters per second, and it does that, I'm sorry, and that's north, and it does that for uh, 12 and a half seconds. Okay, and then for part two, it travels 26 meters south, so that's a displacement, and it does so at a speed of 16 meters per second, which would also be, sorry, a velocity of 16 meters per second, which would also be south, okay? So I'm looking for the average velocity here. So I need the total displacement and the total time, which means I need the displacement for part one and time for part two. All right, can I calculate those? Yeah, I just have to manipulate V equals D over T. So D equals V times T for our first one, okay? And so that'll be 12.5 times four, right? Which should be 50, right? Yeah, okay, uh, 50 meters north. All right, so I've got that now. And then the time here, time will be D over V. All right, so that'll be 26 meters divided by 16. All right, which gives us 1.625 seconds. All right, so now that I have those, now I can get my total displacement and my total time. So my total displacement is that I went 50 meters north and then went 26 meters south. So I only ended up 24 meters north of where I started. Everybody okay with my logic there, All right? 50 minus 26. For my time, okay, I had 12 and a half seconds for the first part and 1.625 seconds for the next part. So that should be 14.125, right? There's my total time. Now I can calculate my average velocity. Okay, by going V equals D over T, okay, and just going 24, sorry, and that's displacement, meters north divided by 14.125 seconds. All right, so I'm getting an average velocity here of 1.7 um, meters per second north. Okay, everybody follow what I did there. All right, why can I not just take the two velocities, add them together, and divide by two? Because they're in different directions. Okay, even if I took that into account, I made one negative and one positive, why can't I just add them up and divide by two? I mean, that's how you were taught to do averages. Yeah, exactly. I, if I just add them up and divide by two, I'm effectively saying they counted for half of the trip each. Do they count for half the trip? 
No, okay. It, we, we traveled at one speed for 12 and a half seconds, the other for only 1.6 seconds. That's the equivalent of saying, I can calculate my average velocity on a trip from here to Edmonton, where I traveled the first 360 kilometers at 110 kilometers an hour, and then I slowed down in the last kilometer for construction to 50, but I'll add my two velocities together and divide by two to get the average. Is my average really that skewed? No, okay. Obviously, my average is going to be like 109 because that last kilometer is not going to make that much difference. I travel at 110 for 99% of that trip. Okay, it should count for 99% of that trip, not half of it. Okay, everybody follow me there? Okay. All right. Um, so, in your digital workbook are a few V equals D over T problems just to kind of get the wheels turning again for you okay i don't think they're going to cause you too much uh trouble here all right but here's where you'll find them so if you go into google classroom okay pick physics 20 and it's in the class work area where i showed you all that stuff on friday course materials okay so if you open up course materials um you'll see the notes package okay whoop that's not the one i wanted okay and you'll see um so we want the kinematics worksheet book so that's this one right here okay it'll have your name beside it physics 20 unit one kinematics worksheet book and click on that one and we'll be working on the stuff on page two okay the answers are there in bold so you can check and see if you've done them right okay i'll give you a little bit of time to get ahead of me and then we'll go over any ones that give us trouble Okay, I don't foresee too much, too many of those giving you trouble. Okay, just keep an eye out for speed versus velocity um, on those, just so you're making sure you got them, you know, where you need direction and where you don't. Okay. 